Pro wrestling is no different than any other sport. It's an adrenaline rush of entertainment with athletes taking fans on a journey filled with highs and lows. On the microphone and in the ring, wrestlers tell a story and elicit emotions with their words and actions. The series analyzes the words, the actions, and the progression of wrestlers and feuds, giving fans a deeper look at what they see on screen. In this series, CM Punk's journey to the AEW World Championship. On this episode of the series, CM Punk is back in the ring for the first time since 2014, returning to take on Darby Allin in front of his hometown crowd of Chicago at AEW All Out 2021. After nearly eight years away from the ring, CM Punk returned to competition at AEW All Out 2021 when he faced Darby Allin. A self-proclaimed best in the world, Punk was never the most athletic in-ring performer, instead using his technical ability and wrestling IQ to outmaneuver and outleverage his opponents. Punk was a multi-time world champion in WWE, the top sports entertainment company in the world, but he was entering a new world in AEW, a company that prides itself on pro wrestling. After a seven-year layoff and unsuccessful ventures into MMA and sports entertainment analysis, Punk's return was the talk of the wrestling world, but could he still hang and prove he was the best in the world? There's an argument in sports of rest versus rust. While Punk was away for seven years, only putting his body through the rigors of a couple of MMA training camps and fights, he was mostly taking it easy in terms of physical activity. Meanwhile, his opponent all out, Darby Allen, was getting tossed down flights of steps, put through tables, and falling off high places on a weekly basis, both on television and simply for fun. Punk might be considered rusty, but he was well rested compared to his opponent. Punk handpicked Allen for his return bout, choosing to face him in his hometown of Chicago, giving him familiarity. In his return. Before the match begins, we have the moment. Though Punk has performed in front of larger crowds, this match at the Sears Center feels like there are a million fans in the arena. Punk has been in these moments before. For Allen, this is the first time he's experienced anything like this. The adrenaline rush of a bungee jump off a bridge can't prepare you for wrestling CM Punk in Chicago. Immediately, Darby uses speed and leverage to win the opening lockup on Punk, who seems a bit caught off guard based on his reaction. Punk switches to a power approach. Darby finds an advantage with a hammerlock. Punk, who maybe underestimates Allen and his technical ability, or is rusty, can't find an escape despite multiple attempts and methods. Darby's speed going into the match was always going to be an advantage. Punk manages to use Darby's speed against him, cutting him off with a back elbow. Darby continues to find success with his speed. Punk shows that even if he's a step slower, his mind still works quicker than Darby's. He nearly catches Darby with the go to sleep on a leapfrog counter. Darby escapes as it's still early and he's fresh, but he scrambles to the outside to think about things. Despite the near misstep, Darby doesn't slow down, but Punk counters an Irish whip and sends Darby through the turnbuckles and into the post back first. Punk now has a target. He spends the next portion of the bout working on Darby's back. The attack is twofold as it not only saps Darby's strengths, but gives him something more to think about. Darby's speed has already been cut off multiple times, including a tilt-a-whirl backbreaker sequence after the posting. Now his back is continually being attacked. Darby's coffin drop has proven to be an effective finisher. Will Darby have second thoughts knowing that if he hits it, he damages himself, and if he misses, he could ultimately cost himself the match? The thing about Darby Allen is, he doesn't give a fuck. He's got that dog in him. He'll continue to launch himself back first into Punk, because that's who he is. He's also found success with strikes as his hand speed appears to be too much for Punk. Darby makes a mistake of going up top without Punk being fully incapacitated, but managed to correct things by reversing a back superplex with a crossbody. Punk hits the GTS, but he's too close to the ropes. Whether it's fatigue, rust, or simply wanting to hit the move after multiple failed attempts, the shot sends Allen through the ropes and to the outside. Punk typically has better ring awareness than this, and he knows he costs himself a big opportunity. However, this is where Punk shows his just win mentality. While Jim Ross is promising that Punk doesn't want to win the match like this, Punk proves him wrong by sitting on the opposite corner, letting Bryce Remsburg count. Bryce gets to 9 before Darby gets into the ring. It shows that Punk doesn't feel he needs to beat Darby by pinfall or submission for this to be a successful comeback. He simply needs to win. Punk, now trying to shake off a knee injury, actually seems upset that Allen got back in the ring and punishes him by targeting the head. No longer taking advantage of Darby's mistakes and giving what is presented to him, Punk is now running his offense. He does so a little too loosely, leading to a costly turnover as he takes too much time to set up the GTS. Darby continues to throw caution to the wind, hitting back-to-back -back moves where he launches himself at Punk. 
A third, his coffin drop, misses as Punk sits up and laugh, showing some smarts, but also cockiness that nearly cost him. The closing sequence sees high-level counters from both men. Darby counters the GTS again with the Last Supper pin. Punk cuts him off with a leg lariat, but then he gets cut off on a corner charge. Darby goes for a Poison Rana that is blocked and turned into a Quick Strike GTS with perfect ring positioning for the victory. Being off for over seven years turned out to be a big mental advantage for Punk. Physically, he may have lost a step, but since Punk was never a wrestler who relied much on athleticism, his brain was able to shine like never before in this match. No wrestler, especially one as good as Punk, should be the same after seven years. There's adaptation and evolution at work. For Punk, that adaptation and evolution wasn't present on screen, but instead happened through tape study and scouting. Allen couldn't be sure what kind of person he would be dealing with in Punk, giving Punk even more of a psychological advantage than he already had. Of course, Darby's lack of give a fuck probably meant he didn't care what Punk brought to the table. He was always going to proceed as Darby Allen. This made Darby the perfect opponent for CM Punk, and likely why Punk singled out Allen as his first opponent back. Punk said all the right things about wanting someone young, someone hungry, someone he admired, someone who would be his favorite wrestler if he were growing up today. What Punk meant was he wanted someone inexperienced, flawed, and careless. Punk didn't need to wrestle his match. He needed to let Darby wrestle his match and then capitalize when a mistake was made. And given Darby's speed and high-risk style, mistakes were always going to be made. It was when Darby wrestled with Punk in the early stages of the match, something Punk seemingly wasn't expecting, that Darby found the most success. He just couldn't stick with that plan. When Punk started using his trademark offense, he got a little too comfortable and nearly cost himself, only regaining the advantage when Darby left an opening thanks to a high-risk move. It was when Punk was on the counter or using his size to wear out an already injured part of Darby that he was at his best. The numbers show that Punk's reversal rate isn't close to Darby's in terms of percentage, but the gap in overall reversals isn't enormous and Punk makes up that gap with the bigger offensive moves, many coming off reversals. The submission numbers boosted Punk's overall match offense, showing control when he was able to slow things down. Darby's speed in the striking area was an issue with Punk, who was thoroughly outstruck on the feet. Punk passed his first test back in the ring, showing that even if he was overmatched athletically, his wrestling IQ was able to carry him. Fans never should have doubted Punk in that department. As long as he was showing up to perform and not for the paycheck, which was the case from the very first dance, Punk's mind was going to be at an advantage against an all-action wrestler like Allen. Was Punk back, or was this the case of a well-picked opponent? Next time, on the series. Following his victory over Allen, Punk would string together wins against Powerhouse Hobbs, Daniel Garcia, Matt Seidel, and Bobby Fish. All presented certain strengths and weaknesses, but for Punk, they allowed him to knock off Rust without truly threatening him. At AEW Full Gear, Punk stepped into the ring with Eddie Kingston, man who presented a different kind of challenge, on the mic and in the ring.